And we're live. G'day, everybody. Welcome to Blue Abroad's Eddie Betts Tribute Show. My name is Nick Wisher, and I'm joined by Riley Saray. How are you, mate? Mate, I am. I am good. I've been looking forward to this one for the first uh, for the last couple of days. Firstly, thank you for asking me. Um, we, it's going to be a big one tonight. We're going to be uh, paying tribute to a, to an absolute legend in in so so many different ways. We throw the term legend around often. Um, I don't think, in my my personal opinion, there is no more fitting person for such a term than Eddie Betts. Um, on field, off field. What that man means to us as individually, but what he means to the sport of AFL and what he means to the country um, is immeasurable. Um, I'm already choking up. <laughs> I'm only talking about him, let alone to him. Um, he is my hero in life. He really is. Not only is he a footballer, he's my favourite sports person, but he's my hero as a person in life. And um, so thank you, everybody, for watching and who is joining us tonight. Um, I know that a lot of people are coming on knowing that Eddie will be joining us tonight. Um, so first and foremost, I just want to thank Eddie um, for answering the call. He didn't, full disclosure, everybody watching this, we didn't reach out to Eddie. Eddie reached out to us knowing initially this was just going to be Riley and I and potentially a few others chewing the fat talking about our hero. And I decided to put on social media that I was going to be talking about my, my hero and friend, Eddie Betts. And uh, Eddie saw that and said, awesome. Would you like me to come on? And I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> so this has been initiated by Eddie, and that speaks volumes about who the person that he is. Um, he's a giver of joy. And, you know, hopefully tonight we understand that so many of us around the country are at the moment in lockdown. Um, it might not be the most fun time for all of us. Mental health is not the greatest for a lot of people. Things are a bit down. Hopefully that, you know, a, a giver of joy like Eddie Betts, hopefully we can put a, a smile on people's face and, uh, you know, just sharing some stories. So everybody who is in the comments, we want everyone in the comments, share us your favourite Eddie memories. Um, we want to hear from you. Um, everyone, we're going to share the link out soon for you to be able to jump on and join us on the video chat. Um, so everybody who is watching this, um, think about it. Think, Tell us your most vivid Eddie stories, whether it's sometime you might have met him personally, whether it's your favourite footy memory. Um, it can be anything in general. What makes Eddie Betts a special person to you? Um, it, Raul, do you want to go first? What, what, you know, obviously before the great man joins us, we're going we're gonna to have a bit of a chat, but um, what makes Eddie Betts so special for you? He just, he, he fills my heart with joy watching him play football. Um, there's, he reminds you when you watch our game, um, people of all different sizes can, you know, be magnificent at this game, can bring you joy. But there's just a certain elegance and, you know, um, real just outstanding nature in the way he plays. He, he, he makes it a beautiful game um, with what he can do. He, he does things that... Probably at times he wouldn't think he could do, not let, let alone us. Um, and he's always he's always done things the right way. Um, when he's played, he's done the right things by our football club, by Adelaide, which we'll go into. There's a couple of people joining us tonight from them. We we have to touch on that because those were you know absolutely his, his best years um, yep. in a lot of ways. But he's he's just he made it a beautiful game, and he every time you'd see Eddie, it's just this it's like a almost a hornet's nest just rise up with Eddie coming near the ball. It's it just he's he's it's an un, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. There's there's something special about that dynamic you just touched on. He doesn't even have to get the touch. He gets near the ball, and the crowd comes unglued, and mm. there's just something about that energy that he brings that is mm. pure excitement at any moment he could do something that we've never seen before mm. and we'll likely never see again and that's so rare people mm. we talk about x factor and players with x factor there's that but then there's like eddie's got it with a capital x there's mm. no, nothing quite like it and even we're not even talking about when he's on song when he's on fire there's nothing like it it's a sight to behold. 
He can even have a stinker game. He'll still do something, one touch, and mm. he'll transform the momentum of a game. Um, the, the, best ex- game. the best example of that is the, the Fremantle game at the start of the year. Oh. I think he only had four touches that game, but that goal under yep. the ground and just in front of in front of the crowd is one of the photos of the year. It's it it's is. just it, it's the Eddie effect. It's the Eddie effect. Um, as a Carlton Cheer Squad member, I am very bitter that that didn't happen at our end. <laughs> we we kind of said at the start of the year, or the start of last year, when uh, when he came back to Carlton, we're so excited to see him again. I can't wait for him to do one of those one of those sort of goals in front of the cheer squad end. And then, of course, COVID happened and we didn't get to any games in Melbourne last year. So then we said, okay, well, it'll happen this year. And we finally get to games and there was one. There was one goal at our one like that at our end and it was against the Bombers and he kind of turned it on against the Bombers a bit. Um, again, only a 10, 15 minute uh, spurt, but all of those sort of amazing dribble goals. There was one against Frio, um, one against uh, the Gold Coast up on the Gold Coast was at the other far end. It was a ripper goal. Um, I wasn't at the Swans game in Sydney, but you know, there's still been some incredible moments. Um, oh, the, and the it, Dogs goal this year as well where he kicked it out of the air. Yeah, yeah. He, he's... And this is a bloke past his prime. It's not the old Eddie Betts. If these are the moments, I'm just, I just wish that one of those marks he flew for this year he could have held. Um, mm. Maybe it's still time. Maybe he's, hey, he's going to go out with a bang this weekend, maybe, you know. Um, I wouldn't put it past him just to fly for one no. like that again. <laughs> no. No, it's, um, I, I wouldn't put it past him either. I wouldn't put it past him to um, kick, kick it back. I, I was looking through... Some some of his stats today, and it's it's truly amazing what he what he's achieved. So you, you look at his career overall. He's top twenty now in games played all time AFL VFL history. Twenty uh, ninth most goals kicked, most by a small forward. Um, the closest I guess sort of comparison is probably Kevin Bartlett, but he was more a rover. Uh, most goal assists of all time, and that's the really telling thing about Eddie Betts. He, yeah. he yeah. probably gave off another hundred or two hundred that he could have kicked himself, but he always brought his teammates into the game. He's 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 tran- he's a transcendent character um, in in a footy club, and the way he's developed from this, and I guess for me, and you would feel similar as well because it's similar age profile. I was eight, and we've seen him grow up, and we I've yeah. grown up yeah. watching Eddie. Yeah. Watching, grown up watching, yeah. We, yeah. It's um, um, it's amazing. There's something about that when you say the goal assist. There's something about Eddie in that, as individually brilliant as he is, he's always been a part of awesome groups. So we mm-hmm. talk about the three amigos at Carlton, iconic, not mm-hmm. only of this past generation or so, but we talk about the Mosquito fleet of years gone by. Before that, we had a midfield of Nichols, Gallagher and, and Silvani, Serge Silvani. These iconic, whether it was Ange and Cuda or, or uh, Sticks and Greg Williams, there was always combinations that if Diesel got the ball, you know he was going to hit Stephen Kernahan right here. Um, mm-hmm. Eddie, Jeffy... And Yaz made made sparks fly. Likewise, when he was at the Crows, that Adelaide forward line was what got them to the grand final. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a very deep list and everything, but it was a forward line of Eddie Lynch, Charlie Cameron, Walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, who was the other guy up there? The big fella um, Jenkins for a while. In yep. Podsy Adley before that, they had numbers up in that forward line and they always just worked in unison um and just made things happen so there's a lot to be said about you know eddie is an individually brilliant player but as a team player he was so these guys got they walked taller with eddie around them he just made things happen for them as well he 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 did and i think it's it's telling you you mentioned those forward line names he was still Four-time leading goal kicker at Adelaide. Yeah, yeah no um, slouch. Yeah. You know, yeah. his, his best, his best season, twenty sixteen, he kicked seventy-five goals, which for a, for a small forward is pretty much unheard of. Yeah. And these um, aren't, the, say, these aren't, these aren't leading goal kicker. We, you're kicking, you know, we had a couple of years not twenty-six goals, yeah, or anything. Andre goals, Severett yeah. kicked twenty-six goals for us and got the leading goal kicker. And Maddie Wright again was a very mm-hmm. handy player for us, but I think he got it with like twenty-nine a couple of years and stuff. Yeah. So. That, that's the difference. He's playing a good sides and still getting the leading goal kicker. As you said, 75 for a small forward, hmm. that's weighted. That's that's the equivalent of 100 hmm. goals, in my opinion. Strongly agree with hmm. that. Yeah. And I, I know you'll probably uh, – you'll touch on this when we talk to him shortly, but I, I guess we were talking about memories. If you had to pick one, Eddie, memory that you sort of had to pick out 
Um, what, what would it be? What is it? My, mine's a rare one. Um, mine okay. isn't necessarily. I would love to go through the the game that Andrew Walker took that mark against Essendon in twenty eleven. Eddie kicks eight and just took the absolute P one five S out of them. Um, my favourite Eddie goal is a bit of, is a bit uh, left field. We played the Bulldogs two thousand and eight at at yeah. Docklands, and the Bulldogs that. was the Bulldogs were celebrating fifty four years since their fifty four flag, and it's probably the game I go back and watch on YouTube the most. For whatever reason, the Bulldogs are wearing black shorts anyway. The game's probably most remembered for Favola, very famously, was playing on Brian Lake. And halfway, two-thirds of the way through the third quarter, Fev had kicked zero goals five and was hmm. giving away 50 metres and was doing whatever. And Fev got one free kick, pulled a goal out of his ass, and you could just see this swagger build up. And hmm. Fev famous, famously or infamously went back on the mark and said to Brian Lake as he's getting his drink, I hope you bought tickets. And Brian said, to what? And he said, the Favola show. He said, I'm about to flick the switch here. Watch this. Fev ended up with seven. And <laughs> like kicked kick seven in a quarter and a half and just went like that. And it was something to behold. But the momentum that Fev generated, nothing went wrong for Carlton in a quarter and mm -hmm. a half. And the likes of Wait, the likes of Nick Stevens, the likes of Judd just yes. kicked goals out of their ass in the last quarter. Eddie didn't get a single goal. I don't think he had a single shot on goal or a single scoring shot the entire game. All of a sudden, with about six minutes to go, the game's already won. The ball dribbled to him. I think it was actually Jeffy Garlett dribbled it to him. About a dribble pass along the wing. Eddie grabs it about centre wing, runs to 50, takes on the defender who I think was Mitch Hahn. Don't hold me to that. Mm -hmm. And just arches the back, runs inside 50 and kicks this super banana goal on the run. Craig Bradley stole from 45, 50 metres. Mm -hmm. And that game being at the game, I was only new to the cheer squad at the time. Mm. And the place went bunter. It was amazing. Mm. And that's a real, that for me just encapsulated, he didn't have to have the best day, but when his time came, he was there for the moment. And when the game was there to be won, he kicked the most ridiculous goal that day. And I I will always remember that noise. So it's a real left field choice for me because I know that I don't want to steal the the all of the other moments that everyone else is going to choose. But um, for me, that is just such a special goal in my heart because that's probably my favourite game to go back and watch. It's purely for the for the Favola show, but that one Eddie goal, um, uh, Dwayne Russell's on commentary and just hits it nail on the head. Eddie, where have you been? What a magical goal. Go back and watch it on YouTube, everyone. 2008 uh, Bulldogs versus Carlton. It's bound to be on there. It's a fantastic game. What about you? You've got one more specific moment? I... I, I do, there's plenty you could think of in his career, um, even, you know, just meeting him in certain open trainings and certain games. But mine's a little left field as well. So, and, and, it, and it's more recent. So we look, we look back to last year and, you know, the, the, that's when COVID really started. Um, the whole world was, you know, going, going mad at the time. And it was the, it was the first game that the, that the boys got to play in front of a crowd. And it was the yep. first game that Carlton got to play in front of a crowd since Eddie, Eddie came back. It was against the Bulldogs. Um, it's yep. funny. A lot of the games I remember with him were against the Bulldogs. Um, and he, he kicked four that night. He was one of our best and just some customary Eddie goals, getting out the back smartly, defensive pressure. And, and the reason why I identify that was because in such a time of, I guess, uncertainty, um, yep. you know, things felt abnormal. We, we yeah, you know, yeah. all these terms we hadn't heard before and it was all crazy. It just, for two hours, it just felt... You forgot about it. You forgot, not just forgot about it, it and you remembered it, but I felt, you felt like a kid again. I yeah, felt yeah. like that little nine-year-old sitting there every time Eddie got the boy. It, made, it makes me, it makes you emotional how, you know, how someone still 17 years later can inspire yeah. that in you. It's and that's not just that's not just people in it like of our generation. There's grown mm -hmm. adults in their fifties, sixties, and older mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. Eddie gets near it and does something, and they turn into a kid again. It makes footy fun, and it's such such a special thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and that, and that's why he has uh, he means enough to us and everyone else that is in our chat. Thank you, everyone who is in our chat already. Um, we've got some people, guests coming on who are going to talk about, you know, what Eddie means to them. But that's how good this bloke is. Mm. With the greatest respect, you know, we love you, Levi Casbolt. We mm. love everyone who wears the Carlton Guernsey means a lot to us. Um, and whoever you go for, they mean a lot to you. 
Um, he's different. He's different. Not everyone gets a tribute show. No, no, <laughs> and, no, no, and no Let's no, be no, honest. No. I, I only conceived this idea a couple of days ago. I was just feeling a bit emotional. I was watching a, a highlight reel. They put out a thing when uh, of Eddie's highlights. Full disclosure, I knew it was coming before the announcement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to tell you how, but I did. Um, but I started watching Eddie highlight reels, and it just got me in this emotional place. I hit up Terry Degani, and I said, well, Tez, I just want to be able to have a forum where I can let out my feelings. I want to talk about my hero. Um, that's what he inspired in me and hit up you, you're awesome. You're up for it. And then by the time I started asking the question to people, Hey, would you like to come on and share what Eddie means to you? The response Riley is amazing. And for everyone who's watching this, I really hope we can get through all of you. We really, really do. Um, I promise that Eddie is coming on. We're not just <laughs> offering the world and delivering nothing. He is coming on. Um, we're just waiting for him. Um, he's got some other stuff going on at the moment. There's, you know, he's it's his final week of footy. He's got a lot of media to do. He's got a lot of stuff. So we're so thankful that he's giving us his time. Um, okay. We understand how blessed we are. Um, but, um, yeah, so Eddie is coming. Um, what about what about projections? What do we think for this weekend, Riley? Can we – you said before you reckon he just might just turn it on still. You reckon four goals? Yeah, I do. I do. I reckon four. I reckon they will. They'll funnel the ball to him. And and surely GWS on. have a sense of occasion. Like we know that Clarkson decided to put everybody on for Vola on ninety nine goals. Surely GWS can just say, "Hey, you know, we'll focus on we'll focus on the well, we'll, we'll go and double team Charlie Kerno or something like that, mm -hmm. or we'll go and tag Matt Owies, or just let Eddie run <laughs> for God's mm -hmm. sake. Don't <laughs> get anyone on him. No, it's he's yeah, let the people have what they want. I fully agree. Um, I think one thing that we need that I wanted to touch on as well, and we'll touch on this when Eddie comes on, is you know, as it's for me, it's very rare for some to see someone who, in in his position, you know, seen as small forward, pro, arguably for me, he is the greatest to to do it um, in that position. He's if not, he's certainly in the conversation with your Mill and your Dacos, those sort. And yet, still have just as much, if not more, of an impact as a general human being outside the sport um, for indigenous indigenous activism. Um, as as the shirt you're wearing, the 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 foundation which he's looking to start, which we'll talk to him and get hopefully yep. get some insight on. Yep. Um, he's. I'm just so happy he's not going to be lost to our game, um, oh. and not not be lost lost to us because he's one of those characters that you sit there and I and we'll sit there in our seventies and eighties. Like, do you remember watching Eddie? Yeah, and we'll oh, talk. I, I, you'll talk to your grandkids. Like there was this player back in the day called Eddie Betts. Yep. And no, I, I don't care what anyone says. There is, there will be no one better um, doing at that sort of thing than Eddie Betts. My Just, dad, my dad, growing up was very good friends and still is friends with with Jezelenko. And growing up as a kid, the fact that my dad knew Alex Jezelenko was the greatest thing in the world imaginable. Mm -hmm. I've only got stories to go by. With the famous games, you can go and watch the 1970 Grand Final. You can go and watch the – I know I can understand probably how good he is, but at the same time, I've got no idea just how good Jezelenko was um, and multiple positions. That Grand Final, the, he goes to centre-half back and takes him. So he, goes, he can play as a midfielder. He can play on the wing. He can play – so he must have been something else. And you can only go by stories. For me, the best I have ever seen is Greg Williams. I will tell my grandkids in 60 years, 50 years' time just how good he was. But I think everybody, no matter who you go for, is going to say, there was this bloke called Eddie Betts. And mm. we've mentioned it before. Every time he gets near it, people mm. felt things. And not only the footballer, as a human, um, you don't have to follow footy to know who he is. You don't have to follow footy to know what he stands for and and who he stands for mm -hmm. um as you say i think that is well it is it's not, not, i think it, it is it's far more important than footy what he stands yeah. for and who he stands for um mm -hmm. and for his for his ability and to always have to be the one relied upon to teach the lessons when it comes to things like racism for him to be the one who has to be called upon to put on a smile and say the right thing and do the right thing when all he probably wants to do is 
do this to people yeah. and just go, okay. I've had enough. You know, we drove Adam Goods out of the league. Mm. We, we've done it to Winmar. We've done it to Michael Long. You know, we don't understand and when I think people appreciate the, the tolerance that Eddie Betts has. He preaches tolerance and preaches acceptance and inclusion to people, but I don't think people understand just how much he has because society's given him plenty of reasons to be bitter at the world and he doesn't. Yep. No, I fully agree. Um, just looking through some of the comments here, there's some really good memories Bring mentioned. Someone up. mentioned uh, a preseason game in Lavington in 2006. Oh, Lavington. Talking Can't Lavington. Say I was there. Lavington. Uh, Lavington. Who did one's we play? Little... Do we know? Uh, I I can't remember because I, all I remember whoever it, it must have been, in, it, must have been a, it must have been a nab um, like one yeah. of those scratches because we lost that we lost the first round of the Wizard Cup that year I, against I Geelong going from to a preseason game at Bendigo we played Collingwood one day is about as unique as venue as I can remember for a nab I, Cup game. I, I, I the the most unique one and I was at this game was we played GWS in 2011 in Canberra the year before yes. the GWS came into the league. Yes, and I we won. We won by about 170 points. points. Yeah, I remember that one. Yes. Yeah. Um, got a couple other here as well. And we'll have plenty of these tonight. Josh yep. Loss, he's, despite this one being in Adelaide, the left foot taught from the boundary against Fremantle. Stupid good. Best, one of the best goals you will ever see. Um, I still don't know how he did that. I, I've got to ask Eddie: Is there any times you've actually surprised yourself? Oh, I, there has to be. Come on, it has to be a couple. There of has to be. There's times where. He knows. You can tell, I reckon. When he does the whole, you know, how good am I, the swagger comes, yeah. he means those ones. He yeah. means those ones. When he does but the... there's, a, there's a couple where he kind of just goes, you know, hand up, that was all ass. Mm. But it happens yeah. too often for it to be all ass. That's what can, is intriguing about it. Yeah, exactly. It's um, I one of those goals, I think that one – his fifth goal against Essendon in 2011 where he sort of did that and he was sort of looking the pass off. He stepped inside two players. It's just – it's un, it, it's unbelievable. Um, what – what he's <laughs> – I don't know how he does it. I don't know how you can – you can't teach it for mine. Like you can try and teach, but there's just a certain you've either got it or you don't. Oh, no. Um, what Eddie does can't be taught. He can teach – so we'll talk about – and I'm sure when Eddie comes on, we'll talk about it um, – the likes of Durden, the likes of Honey, Zach Fisher, Fogarty, um, around the club and what he has brought to them in the last couple of years around their club is immeasurable. He can teach them a lot, but he can teach them all they know, but he can't teach them all he knows. There's a yeah. difference. Um, and that's and I hope, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to think that one of these kids could turn out to be half as good or as good? But we're talking about not only a once-in-a-generation player, we're talking about a once-in-a-lifetime player. We've, mm. We spoke about Dacos. We spoke about Milne. Jeff Farmer, for me, was one of my other favourite growing up. Mm. Eddie's got him covered. Mm. He's, he does. For, for me, he's the he's the best of all time at what he does. Um, yep, he is. I if there was one, a team of the thing, century or whatever equivalent tomorrow, yeah. he's, he gets that yeah. spot. And yeah. one thing one thing for me that I don't think talked about enough, there's certain comments. I, he performs so well in big games. Yeah. Um, yeah. I... The 2013 elimination final where he kicked Huge. four and we came back against, against Richmond. Uh, 2015 elimination final for, for Adelaide. He kicked five and that was the, that was the I was, uh, game. I was there. They played Footscray? Yep, they played Footscray, one by seven points. There. One of the best games I've watched in my life. One of the it best games I've ever been at. Back yep. and forth. Back and, it, he kicked five. He was sensational. Yep. Six against North Melbourne in the um, elimination final the next year. And yep. there's so many, you know, different Carlton ones. I, I do have to say, though, from a bias perspective, you know what my favourite Eddie Betts fact is, Nick? Mm. He's kicked his most goals against Essendon. That's awesome. So the most of, of, of any team he has played, Essendon has the most <laughs> yeah. goal. That's against so Betts. good. <laughs> it, it goes, it goes, the, the top four is Essendon. <laughs> oh, I hate them. Yeah, Essendon, Port Adelaide, Richmond and Collingwood. I was going to say, Port, Port's got to be up there. He's given him a lot of grief over the years. So he, he, we've, we've got a has. couple of Adelaide fans coming on, and one of them, sorry to everyone who is waiting to come on. Um, we've got an Adelaide uh, supporter who is going to join us and speak about Eddie's time in the, in South Australia and how good he was. But those showdowns, I think, you know, correct me here, I think it was over the first five showdowns he kicked 26 goals in the first five times he played Port for the Crows. Talk about endearing yourself to the to the to your new team. 
they're the games that matter to them. It's like someone coming to Carlton and you you turn it on against Essendon and Collingwood every year, and you turn it on in round one against Richmond in your first game or something. Fans will take notice of you real quick. Um, and yes, Eddie Betts was already Eddie Betts before he went there, but he kicked 26 goals in his first five showdowns, and that's just ridiculous. Um, so who were the other teams? You said Port Adelaide second, Collingwood? So Port, Port Adelaide second. Um, so, he's, so if we go through, he kicked 62 goals, 36 against Essendon. He's played them 28 times. Uh, 48 goals. Three a game. Yeah, uh, 40, 48 goals against Richmond and Port Adelaide, respectively. Both played them 25 times. Uh, Collingwood, he's played 25 times and kicked 44. His prob- from what I can tell, his best average against a side uh, would be against the Gold Coast. In 13 games against them, he's kicked 35 goals. It's a good return. It's a it's it's a decent return. He, he loved to – I mean, he was talking about his 300th game. I think on three three sixty last night. Yeah, was, yeah. Um, there was a favorite ripper favorite goal Wigan. against Gold Coast that game. Yeah, he's oh, he kicked six that night. Le- yeah. Left foot, left foot, left foot Nana Keki. Yeah, there's only a couple of minutes to go in the game as well. Yeah. He's a few people can get the commentators cheering for you. Um, oh. so there's one that moment. We, it, the, I think it was Hudson and Dunstall from memory in that game, and they'll come on, come on, Eddie, just give us one goal, give us one, and he kicks it, and they were screaming. Um, yeah, Dennis Armfield was someone like that. The commentators would cheer for. Um, Darcy Vessio had it in the AFLW. I was watched earlier this year when she was about to break the goals record and everything. And Skinny Lappin was on commentary, and he just didn't care about the game. He just started saying, "Kick it to Darcy, kick it to Darcy." But Eddie's got that about him, and that that joy extends to the commentary team as well. So um, are we ready? It looks like we're ready to go. We we're ready. ready. Everybody, we don't need to do an introduction, um, but let's do one anyway. 349 going on 350 games. What on earth is this? <laughs> 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 Get it off now. <laughs> you know you're an old bastard, but you're not quite that old, are you? For God's sakes. <laughs> Father, time, Father Time's caught up to him. <laughs> All the great hairs. What up, How man? are you, great man? And great woman and great little person. How are you? We're fantastic. All the better for seeing you two. Mm, exactly. Thank you so oh. much for joining us. It genuinely means everything to us um we understand how we understand we understand how busy you are we understand we your time constraint on Facebook and we said oh let's just jump in eh, and say hello you guys are yeah. the most important people in all of this oh look at your beanie ah, your, look at your beanie your got the badges <laughs> we've made we're making merch in your name like that's what eddie means to us you are the, we've mentioned it before you're the bringer of joy mate um and mm. we have a waiting room flooded with people wanting to come on and let you know what you mean to them. Um, and I'm sure that we're going to have everyone in the comments all night. We don't want this to become this self-indulgent thing. We understand we don't want to be embarrassing you. But at the same time, what you have brought to our, our footy club at our game for the past 17 years will never be replicated. Um, people have come and gone this footy club, but very few have ever impacted me personally as much as you have. Um, and I am not ashamed to say, you know, as a grown adult, to tell you, you're my hero, um, not only in footy, but in life. Um, as a teenager, full disclosure, as a teenager, for those that don't know me very well, I was a bit of a fuck up and I battled a lot of things with depression. I had substance abuse and addiction problems and I wasn't doing too well. The footy each weekend gave me a reason to keep going and, you and a few others, but you were one of the pioneers of that, keeping me going, giving me a reason to wake up each morning. And I would turn up to the games when things – now, for all the kids watching, you think Carlton's a bit crap now? We were bad. Back in the Aww. day, 2005, five, six, we were pretty rotten. Mm. Guys like Eddie and Fev with the other ones gave us a reason to turn up to the footy each week. And we might lose by 100 points, but you guys would be doing something that – We'd never seen before, and we still haven't seen since. And um, genuinely, Eddie, for me, that got me through some real, real tough times. Um, And it's one of the great honours. We always say, if you get to meet your hero and get to tell your hero what you mean to them, 
um, what would you say? I'd be telling you, thank you, mate, because for my real rough years, you don't know it. You played a huge part in getting me through them. So thank you oh. so much, brother. It, it really does. It means the world to me. And it means the world to me that you're on here too. But it also, like, you have to understand as well, like, without you guys, there is nothing. And that's why you are so important and so important in the whole puzzle of Eddie's career. Like, we just... Without the fans, I wouldn't be able to entertain. <laughs> like this week. <laughs> I was still entertained this week, though, but it wouldn't be... Yeah, right, you will. <laughs> as, uh, as special, but, you know, uh, it just gave me goosebumps every time everyone, when I went near the ball, the crowd chanted the name and they made you, when you're not playing a good game and you touch it once or twice or three times and they go crazy, you know, you still feel like you played your role. So Absolutely, thank you guys. brother. Roles, anything like we've got, you know, the great man and the great woman, Anna, you're just as important to this story as anybody. Riley, what, like, take it away, man. What do you think? Um, I mirror a lot of what uh, Nick said. For me, I was a young eight-year-old um, when you first played for Carlton, <laughs> came to the club, and there's not too many games where I don't remember um, moments moments of you um, playing, both from obviously us and Adelaide, the joy you brought to us, but the joy you brought to me. I can't think of a player that's had too much more impact on watching you play like you have. Um, it was inspirational to see some of the things you've been able to do and how in a lot of ways seeing you grow and me gr grow up watching you it's it's yeah. just been remarkable and, and i i was saying before you came on um the first uh when you when the hub was last year the first game when we played against the western bulldogs i and you kicked four you turned it on um it made me feel like an eight-year-old kid again and there's not many people that can do that, my friend. It's um, it means it means a hell of a lot. And uh, just from my perspective, just want to say thank you for what you've done for the game for this club. And yeah, uh, absolutely, it's been you're you're a champion, mate. And on, but obviously, off the field is a whole other scope as well. And the work you're doing there is really inspirational. So credit to you, and credit to Anna and your family. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We've we understand that we've we're very grateful to have your time, and we don't want to abuse you know the gesture that you guys are taking to coming on. So we we will we'll get start. Well, how about we get to it? We've got some guests in the waiting room who are oh, wanting cool. to come on and also you know say good day. So Riley, do you want to admit our I first guest? The first, one in. Uh, the first <laughs> guest we'll be bringing in is uh, the founder of this channel. He's a uh, course Terry. You got us, oh, mate. Terry. Hey, Terry. Hey, how are how you guys? Are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. That's the way. Um, as the boy said, thanks so much for giving up your time. Um, yeah. It means a lot, and and you, you, you know, yeah, you, you've been you've been like that with the fans forever. You've always understood that the fans make the club what it is, and I think that's probably why you feel that that noise um, every time you go near the ball. Um, how are you going, mate? How, what's what's happening in your in your space at the moment? It's been pretty crazy this week, actually, to be honest. Um, a lot of, I just, and that's why I was late. I was just on another um, Zoom call just then uh, with the AFLPA. And yeah, it's just been pretty, pretty uh, hectic, but we're just trying to soak up the week, you know, um, enjoy it. You know, actually, I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get another contract because I didn't get offered another contract. And yep. I felt like I wanted to play on and I felt like I could offer, you know, Matty Ollie's, you know, Corey Durden and, Josh Honey, a lot of advice, and you know I've been working with those guys as well. And it was it was sad. I knew I knew this time was going to come, but you know I was just uh, I just always believed that I could play footy forever, which which you can't. But um, yeah, I'm really we're really excited now. You know, playing for 17 years, playing 350 games, it, it's an amazing journey. When I when I think back on it, from where I come from. Um, and the way I grew up and what I've achieved throughout my life to, to now has been phenomenal and I, um, I kind of pinch myself. Uh, but I'm really happy about the next chapter. Um, you know, I'm working with um, Coles around Australia and within Aboriginal communities, which is really good. I'm still on Fox Footy. Um, I'm contracted to Fox Footy, which I'm going to continue to do and work because I want my family and my people to see a black face, an Aboriginal face yep. on representation matters talking about 
issues that matter that they could represent and they could um, you know that a lot to them. And but so, also your football knowledge is important. Yeah, I'll kick them off the couch. I'll be like, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn now. Um, but uh, and um, uh, what else? It's just been a bit. It's been. We're starting up a foundation. I'm starting up the Eddie Best Foundation. There, we're working with Aboriginal, um, Torres Strait Islander youth. Um, just trying to get them to chase their dreams, to become athletes and leaders in whatever they do, whatever they want to achieve. We got. I wrote two children's books. Uh, one's about kindness. One's about um, Aboriginal culture. My people. There we go. Right there. Um, oh, you're the best. And we're going we're gonna to write a third. Shout, but, out, shout out to my nephew, Aiden. These are for you, Aiden. I know you're watching. <laughs> but uh, we're in the process of turning it into a cartoon series at the moment. So we're very excited. So it's and pretty flat out. That's our sold. I'm not on a structure no more. So 17 years on a football contract, football structure. Every time you want on a holiday, you have to think about where you're where you having a holiday. If there's a gym there, there's an oval, you have to run to keep fit. Got to come back and no shake more skin folds, mate. No more skin folds. Get into the Jesus. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think it'll be that'll be the biggest challenge for Eddie because he is ultra ultra schedule based and organised. So he even like his eating is not like, am I hungry? It's like, is it twelve o'clock? I need to eat now. So I, think that, <laughs> so I think that whole schedule thing will be a new wow. thing for Eddie so on time and that I think that's a credit to like his longevity in his career because he was so committed and on time and always like never late to train you I mean no, always early. Early, be early early bird <laughs> at least an hour yeah. an hour before which used to drive me crazy because I'm like can you just drop the kids off at kinder and you'd be like <laughs> you always do but, but yeah. he's like very early. I'd rather be early than late. That's, that, that's just but take exactly. note to but take note to all the kids watching who want to play footy. Want to make three hundred and fifty games and be an all be a Hall of Fame first ballot? You know all of this legend of the sport. Get the training early. Do it, and it all matters. Yeah. Now we're very excited, and we are really excited as a family. The only one was really disappointed was Lewis yeah. <laughs> because he lived and breathed AFL. Um, brought up in this life, you know, walking yeah. into rooms, high fiving Paddy Dangerfield, Tex Walker, um, Roy Sloan, all these boys, and then coming back to. Um, Patrick Cripps and, and the likes here. So he, he we won't get down the days until he's ready to be drafted if he down. wants to do it. Yeah. Well, this one yeah. is Eddie Betts. So don't put pressure on him. It has been named. But we did do it the other day. There was like all different toys on the ground and he just wanted that ball. And I'm like, he's obsessed Amazing. with that football. <laughs> it's a sign. Amazing. It's a sign. 18 yeah. years' time, Eddie. <laughs> You'll get it one yeah. day. So. No, that's awesome, mate. It's good to hear. It's good to hear that you've you seem like. I mean, when you when you listen to a lot of athletes talk about when they retire, it's you know you're ultra competitive and it's important. It seems like it's important to have something to channel that into. So, um, I hope that you have that around you. Um, I guess you know people are going to come on and, and thank you, and I'm going to do the same. Um, I want to share with you one memory of mine from your career. There's many of them, but there was one particular night. It wasn't. Just, it was about you, but it was about the team as well. It was round three, two thousand and twelve, Friday night. We played Collingwood at the MCG. We belted them. Um, Murph, Gibber, Juddy, Scotland all had thirty plus. You kicked five goals. You had Lumumba on a string, and I'll never forget the feeling after the game when uh, we were premiership favourites. Can you tell me and can you confirm to me, did you all – like, we were actually going to win the flag that year, right, before everything <laughs> unfolded? <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll put the lid off it. We'll, we'll pop a champagne. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but, yeah, I guess – Do you I, remember that? No. I remember I remember King Do you remember? Old, would, mm. but I – But do you remember feeling like you were going to win the flag that year? I remember – well, it, it is tough. Like, when, Carl, when Carlton's up and running, we're, we're a good side and – we do truly believe that we could be anyone. And I've said it to the boys now that when I went to Adelaide, we played some games there where, especially the 2017 season where we went all the way to the grand finals, that we we truly believe that we could beat anyone no matter what. We, we don't care where we were, where, if we were going down to Geelong, if we were going over to West Coast, or going up to Brisbane or Sydney, we knew we were getting it done no matter what. And um, and I told the boys that you just got to believe in each other because um, we've got the talent there. And I said that, the group that we have right at the moment is more talented than the group that I had at Adelaide when we went to the grand final. But everyone had a role to play. Everyone played their part, played their role, and that's how we connected. Where here, if they just connect and 
play their part and play their role. And they're um, all just new. But they're all they're all young. They're super talented. So I guess you got to play a lot of footy together, and that's what we did at Adelaide. We played three to four years together before we made the yeah. grand final uh, with roughly kind of almost the same team. There was about five or six changes within that group within five years, but that gave us a lot of gel and connection. And um, you know, the boys are super talented and. You know, there was periods there where we won this week, this year, a couple in a row, and we're thinking, yeah, we got it, we're going now, we're going to play, you know, finals footy, we're going to go deep, and um, it just didn't turn out the way it meant to be. So um, hopefully and eventually I truly believe that it's just around the corner uh, for the Carlton faithful. They, they just got to listen to listen to me and listen to my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie knows that. Just around the corner. Love it. Love it, mate. Well, yeah, listen, from me, I'm going to jump off in a moment. Thank you very much, not only for what you've done on the field, but for educating the Carlton people. Um, also, um, behind every great man is a great woman, Anna. I know that um, you've played a massive role in, in, in Eddie's career, and I want to thank you as well for providing that, that support system. Um, Eddie, mate, we love you. You're a fan now, so if you want to come and jump on after the game and have a chat about the game with us fans, you're more than Eating welcome. Eating on fan cans. Please yeah. do it. Please do it. <laughs> I'll get on once or twice. If... I'll come on, but I'm very forward, small forward, um, biased. So I'm always like, you'll stay on. I will stay on because I don't want no person. <laughs> and we know that you're going to be. Yeah, we know that you're going to be sitting off. in the cheer squad too. Mm. I'm going to jump off. All the best. I'm going to play a little video before I go. This was made by our video editor Willem, um, and then we'll get uh, everything underway. <laughs> I'm starting to get emotional. Um, Very nice. How good was that? That's from our, that's from our in-house uh, resident videographer, Willem, who is such a talented kid. Um, look. How good is that song, by the way? That, 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 that song's a vibe. Could you send us that video, please? That was that's. It's online. Yeah. I don't know how to save it though. Online. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, we'll make it. We'll make it work. Yeah. We'll consider it done. Yeah, Willem, I know you're watching, mate. But yeah, yeah well, I love the the song like do, 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 when the kicks like kick, 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 yeah. kick, 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 and then all the good goals like do, 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 when the bass drops. Nah, it's, it's yeah. a vibe. I love it. Eddie, I've got to ask before we bring our next guest. Did you the, the amount of good goals you kicked in your career? I read a stat today. One of every six goals that you kicked in your career was nominated for goal. Nominated. Week. How good is that? Did you did you uh, ever kick a goal that you surprised yourself? Were you like, how did yeah, I do that? Actually, I think how'd they go in? Um, but yeah, uh, so as since I was a kid, I was being kicking footy, um, dribbling it through shoes. Um, growing up with my family and uh, to, to do it uh, on the big stage and all around Australia, oh, footy, yeah, sometimes I surprise myself and um, yeah, it's it's crazy actually to be honest how they go in um, and to win gold of the year four times. I think I should have won it eight times. I come second four times and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I oh, read that stat. I read that story. stat. So I was trying to count how many goals I kicked, and every six one's been goal of the year, and I've been nominated twenty seven. I think twenty. I don't know how many. Yeah, times but remember, um, at the when you were at that, you came runners up for the goal of the year, but but you'd won the public vote, so we thought you'd won, and you put your beard put out. Put my beard down, bet to walk up, and they said Hayden Ballantyne, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we actually we never did like up. him anyway. We got dressed up to go to this event too. Yeah, I wish we, I could have stayed at home. We we both went because he won the public vote, so we we're like, oh, he's won it. They invited me too, so I thought, yeah. And it was so embarrassing. <laughs> not only not only goals of the year. I reckon you're trying to make a make a late run for mark of the year this year. You've flown for a few this year that uh, they haven't stuck, but it hasn't stopped you trying this year. I got one last one last try. I last springs try. into his legs, brother. I know you can do it. I'm gonna land oh, no. on my head. Mark of the year. You no, want. No. Just, <laughs> just touch the roof. I know you can. <laughs> well, I hope I can. I'm super back. I my ankle, so I'll, I'll try to do it. Honestly, yeah. everyone, I'm going to try to take Mark here. I told no. the boys to kick it to me this week. I'm going to get trouble for everyone's head. I don't care if I give away a free kick, I'm going from. No, it's not about you. It is. It's about the team. It is about the team. I'm about the team. Every week and every year, I'm about the team. I think. One time it should be about you're gonna <laughs> I, I agree. You, you, it's it's amazing you say that. I was looking to that. You've actually got the most goal assist of all time as well. So that just <laughs> exemplifies it. So That's it's crazy. Favorite. All about the team. I, just said, I think Gary Ablett and DDJ are third or second, I think. And um, I, I hopefully no one passes me. I want to keep that stat. So it's <laughs> a big no company they're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Um, next guest we're going to bring on is uh, Adelaide support. He's from the Rainbow Crows, I believe. His name is Matt. Just bring you in. Uh, Matt, have you, got, have you got us, mate? Yeah, I've got you guys. How are you? Hey. Welcome, Matt. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you going? How are you? How you doing? Oh, fantastic. Thanks. How are you holding up, Eddie? I'm good. I'm good. I am excited. Uh, I spoke to are you. Are you in Adelaide or are you yeah. in Victoria? So you're in Adelaide, yes. I spoke to a lot of Adelaide radio today and yesterday. Um, I spoke to I spoke to Rory and, and Ditz on Five Double A, and I got um, Rashido on Friday tomorrow. I spoke to Ali Clark this morning from ABC Adelaide. So it's been a big Adelaide morning for me. <laughs> oh, look, it, it was a big time when you were here those years. It was some of the best times for the club. You know, I mean. You came when the new stadium was built, so I think you know you held out on us a bit there. Finally, coming when we got the new facilities, but we won't hold that against you. Um, oh, I yeah, need I just remember. <laughs> Your South Australian Sorry, accent. You know, we've got that I nice love... round sound. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I think we talk like come back, come again. back. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit weird actually because playing against Port Adelaide, it was going back to Adelaide Oval on the weekend. It was the first time. That I've been yeah. back since I left, and because of COVID, and obviously we're at Gold Coast. And I told Anna that when I, and she said, really, because she went back to see Tyson a few times. And, and I haven't been back, and it was so weird. Like, it felt like on the bus, you know, that I just lived around the corner there for six years. Yeah. On Adelaide, and we had to go straight to Adelaide Oval and get COVID tested at nine o'clock. And we did COVID testing in the Adelaide room. So I got to come back to the home, uh, my second home, one last time, walked in and Gave my number a kiss, number 18, and my name was on there. And I did a video of it and sent it to all the boys and said one last time on, on Adelaide Oval. And none of the boys knew, though, that I um, I was yeah. playing my last game. This is my last year. And I got really emotional after I walked off the ground. I started crying in the room because we had some great memories there and I had some great friendships. And, you know, we did a lot at that Oval for six years. And it was an Oval that I kind of really made it all one end anyway, my own. And... Uh, yeah, it was it was actually really really emotional, and um, yeah. I bawled my eyes out at, at the end of it. We saw yeah. the scenes uh, as you were coming off the ground. We saw the scenes. Yeah. It was actually the Port Adelaide cheer squad on that end, at least, giving you an ovation. And I thought to myself, after all the grief you've given Port Adelaide fans in those showdowns, <laughs> um, you know, for that, but that but that speaks to the respect that you've got in, universally for the Port Adelaide fans to also be cheering you off. Yeah, but Matt, I don't know where you one. I don't know where you one of them, Matt. I know that. Eddie and Anna hooked up a lot of Rainbow Crows and a lot of Crows yeah. cheer squad members with tickets. So there are Adelaide Crows fans going to watch a Carlton and Port Adelaide game on the weekend. Um, Matt, what are moments for you? Like it, it oh. broke our hearts to see him in an Adelaide jumper, but they're some of the most incredible moments yeah. the footy has ever seen. And you got to oh. enjoy them, share them with It was him. so great. It was so great. I did get to go to the the game last week. Um, I was up in the, in the stand uh, on the second level. Um, I did. I'm known for being a loud mouth at the footy, so I did <laughs> borrow my dad's Carlton scarf and I did start the chant up on the uh, the second level for you. So uh, I did my part in that first half. 
Yeah, yeah the um, boarding comes in the second half, so anyway, but we're still, <laughs> we're still um, I'm still uh, bloody um, close with a lot of the players and hopefully we'll get back to see some of the some of the games there because I still support them and I still like to come back. I actually spoke to someone from the Adelaide um, today and um, I saw him today at, at the park and he said that they're working on next year, they, they push for the AFL to get the Crows and Carlton game at Adelaide Oval and they wanted me to, to do a lap around that knowing that I played for both clubs to say goodbye to both cheer squads at once and I said that'll be amazing. You know, that if they get the game next year at Adelaide Oval, all the MCGs yep. do, a, do a lap of honour with the two fans that I really cherish and love. So, uh, Absolutely. really looking forward to it. We need to give you that proper farewell, mate. We need to, we need you to come back over to Adelaide. We want to see you one more time. And we'll try and get the Northern End renamed after you so we can unveil it when you do the lap. <laughs> who, who, who's who's currently paying rent in Eddie's, in Eddie's pocket at Adelaide Oval, Matt? Mm-hmm. Oh, look, I mean, at this point, who, who isn't paying rent in Eddie's pocket? I mean, any player who even stands in that pocket should uh, pay No rent. one stays in that pocket. If they, until they win more than 12 years down one end of, the, of that ground, they can't have it. So They, they, they know better than to stay. They, they should stay clear. They know better. I got to see two-thirds of the goal of the years kicked in that pocket, and I'll never forget each and every one of them. They were the best games I've ever seen. That's amazing. How did the tweaks get into your head? You're getting a bit like... <laughs> no, I'm pushing for the end. Yeah, at the end, at the end. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's not all about we, we, we thought it was really important to get Matt on. Um, yes, this is a Carlton show. This is a Carlton podcast. But, you know, it's if we're going to tell the, the Eddie story as a footballer, the Eddie story, um, that involves the Adelaide Crows, where the Carlton fans may not have loved that time away, but – it made us actually go for Adelaide in a lot of games we were watching as a neutral fan, and I'm sure that a lot of people felt the same. But, Matt, um, thank you for coming on. It really means a lot to us that you're giving up your time. But we just wanted to honour the link that you guys had to the Crows. And, um, you know, Matt, I know that you're involved with the Rainbow Crows and stuff like that, and their group that Eddie and Anna got around. And, you know, the time the relationships formed over there mean a lot to you guys. And we just wanted to, you know, extend that offer to you to come on. So, Matt, thank you so much for joining us today, mate. Thank Thanks you, Matt. for having me. It was great. Thanks so much, Eddie. Awesome. Thanks, Sorry, Matt. one of our kids just can't see, Matt. <laughs> Who we got uh, up next, next Riley? Uh, next, uh, we've got... Uh, yeah, cheers, but we got Katie coming on. Uh, Katie, Katie, can you hear us? I, I, <laughs> I thought in true spirit of, you know, every time you see me not being so I thought well, <laughs> keep it keep it going. Keeping it real, Katie, keeping it real. Oh my god, yeah. that was me when Eddie two thousand and eight just every game probably remember my heart be like yeah. seven bits. I remember that one game when you got knocked out and the doctor said to me, Oh, I didn't get knocked out. Well, you had mild <laughs> And I'm like, oh God, what am I, doing? <laughs> I remember oh, the birthdays. It would have been the birthday this year when we were able to go to the women's. I remember sitting in the stands and Caitlin being Caitlin was, you know, indulging in the day. And Eddie's come past. And the first thing he says to me is, Are you sober? Are you drinking? And I'm like, duh, like, of course I am. Without a can of Jimmy, I think. Got to got to keep my appearances up, you know. <laughs> um, I think I really want to share my story in regards to Eddie. Um, I my story started a little bit differently. It wasn't football based, so I went to school in the sticks uh, at Assumption College, and Eddie uh, came and did his. I think it was like teaching rounds or something like that. Hey Ed, and um, I was. Yeah, 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 and I was like the, one of the only girls in like the PE class that he took. And first of all, Fev had just left. Fev had just got, like, he was gone. He was in Brisbane. And so I was still in tears. Like, the dudes in, like, the hallways were putting Fev posters up. I was crying still. Wasn't over it. And so Ed's coming in. I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to play it cool. It's going to be fine. Whatever. Then we go and play soccer in this, like, stadium. And this, not a sports playing kind of gal, right? Anyway, so Ed kicks the ball and, like, comes to me. I don't know if you remember, but I have like to put my hand up. And so I snapped my thumbnail and there's blood everywhere. And all I'm thinking is don't cry in front of Eddie Betts. Don't cry in front of Eddie Betts. And um, I cried in front of Eddie Betts because <laughs> there's blood everywhere. And I didn't know what to do. And from that moment, we've been the greatest of friends. Um, you know, like 
I've got my Adelaide scarf on because, like Nick, you were with me. We went to some finals yeah, and we have been very, very grateful um, to, you know, form those relationships and have that friendship. And even when Eddie went to Adelaide, I supported Ed through it all. I believe friends were more than football at that stage Absolutely. and I'll cry now. Um, and I remember people emailing the club asking for my membership to be taken off me because yep. Ed would come and see me after a game and <laughs> I broke my heart because people didn't realise, like, yes, I love Eddie because of his football. Don't get me wrong. Strong but man. to me, he was he was my friend before football and I was always going to support him regardless of what colours he wore um, and I have. And luckily my membership wasn't taken. <laughs> um, yeah, but, always, yeah. He came to a couple of Crows games as well. Uh, yeah. And uh, I started calling oh, you out somehow. I'm like, is that Katie? That is Katie. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, was, Katie, was, was, Katie is funny when we were, we were when it was Dennis Armfield and we were pretty close. I uh, remember you getting his tattoo, his signature. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's still on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Katie, thank you so much because I remember coming to the cheer squad uh, when I was at Crows. I would see you there. I would come up and give every, all you guys a hug and say hello, and you've always embraced me. And, and it was always nice to me, but when I'd come down a lot up from Lockie Plowman um, <laughs> in the square, <laughs> you always were like, like saying, hello, how you going? We love you, Ed. Come back, come back, come you'd, back. You'd be more popular, yeah. <laughs> there was I – can, I can testify to Katie's uh, – defence is a word to use, but – the love for Eddie when he was playing against us was still universal, but if there was one idiot who wanted to say anything or one someone who might say, oh, I'm going to boo him or I'm going to mouth off or whatever, it would take security holding Katie back, all of it, <laughs> but Katie more, more so. It would take security holding Katie back to get off him because she would just set upon whoever wanted to if, – if there was anyone wanting to think about having a bad word, it would uh, – homegirl would fire up like nothing else and – we did. We went to finals together, Katie, to see. Yeah. I think we went and saw you guys. You played Hawthorne in 2015 mm -hmm. final. It was Danger's last game for yeah. Adelaide. Yeah. Um, and we went in the rooms and everything afterwards. And I remember, Eddie, you saying to a few of the Adelaide Crows boys that, you know, these guys, but it was through Katie that I got to go. But, you know, these guys and Katie, they're Carlton fans and they're here. You know, that's the sort of loyalty that, you know, as you said, Katie, that will always be there. Yeah, word. And, like, especially, like, I guess the past year has been hard for everyone. Um, I, I know a lot of people know that I unfortunately became homeless because of it. Um, and I there's a group that do, um, like, a football team during the week for people who are in those situations. And I reached out to Ed and Anna and I said, look, can Eddie come down? And, unfortunately, they, they were keen, don't get me wrong. But just because of COVID, we just never got to set it up. Anyway, we're at the club one day for the Mother's Day brunch and I took my nana, who she's the reason I um, follow Carlton, thank God, because everyone else was Collingwood, so that could have been a disaster. Yeah. And um, we were walking out and Ed drove past and said it was me, so he pulled around and we were just going to talk, and Anna was on the phone actually, and we were just going to have a chat about, you know, trying to set this homeless thing up, blah, blah, blah. And my poor little 80-year-old plus nana was standing there and I will never forget it. And all she said to Ed was, Ed, I just want to thank you for bringing so much joy to my life all for over the years. And I was like, I, I cried because I'm a sook. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that sentence really resonates through all our supporters, especially this last week and re remembering Eddie's career, like the joy he has brought everybody is, is insane. And just oh, just to say my poor little nana just just. Just fangirl the shit out of Eddie. That's so cute. <laughs> it was the most adorable thing ever. Thanks, Katie. You know, I got you. I, I remember one one year, like I was in the cheer squad still, and we came down to the rooms and you had just had Billy and you were running around after Lewis. And I remember, I've still got a photo of him. I'm holding, because you couldn't hold both of them. And so I've got like, Billy in my arms because you just didn't know what to do with him at one stage. And it's just like those I memories that are so special. Yeah. What's that? I'll hand the baby to you. Yeah, you just hand like, and I was like, yeah. Katie's in form here. <laughs> I let everyone yeah. help 
kids, I'm like, here you go, here you go, here you go. Yeah, it's just, yeah, and even like, you know, when I see the girls at, at footy, it's always like, Aunty Katie, Aunty Katie this, and it's just, it's those memories that, you know, I can I can tell family and I can tell, you know, the future about who Eddie Betts was and, you know, Anna and the kids and yeah. how amazing it was. And I think Tom, who's coming on next, um, he's a good friend of mine and was, is in the cheer squad still and he idolises Eddie, which I'm sure yeah. he will tell stories of. And Great I'll never, ever forget taking him to meet Ed after a game and just watching him meet his hero was yep. Perfect and yeah, it's it's magical and I'm glad that you know I got to sit here and have a wine. And we couldn't do something like this, Katie, without someone like you. Seriously, I appreciate um, it. Seriously, um, I mean, I thought I cried heaps over Dang leaving, but then today <laughs> I like tried to cry all my tears out and stuff. And then Carlton bloody posted a photo. I think it was I don't know, three hundredth maybe. I don't know, yeah. but um, it was Dennis and Robbo carrying him off, and that was it. I was done. Like. <laughs> already a depressed loser but like throw dennis in the mix game over like <laughs> throw, throw 200 days of victorian lockdown in the mix like, yeah. it's, very, very right it's like yeah. the worst week absolutely we cry a week yeah. Yeah. We drink wine we i mentioned that to katie earlier today i said you know half of the reason for wanting to do this and share some stories is to put a smile on people's faces. Um, it, times are tough for everybody. And Katie, thank you for sharing some of your story about what's going on at the moment. But this year isn't the best for a lot of people, nor has the last couple of years. But if sharing some stories and being able for to be able to share, you know, Katie, to, to be able to tell someone what they mean to you and, and Riley and myself and everyone who's going to join us, that's kind of our... our goal here is just to put on a smile on people's face and share that joy so um katie you're a star thank you so much for coming on it means a lot to me seriously but um okay. thank yeah, you for I'm having me you could do this with you yeah we well, yeah. kick it back we'll yes you know we'll see this anyway. we'll be going to the women's as well we'll be coming back and watching Carl play as well and yeah absolutely so, yeah. one of these dude throw up one of these on the weekend <laughs> 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 See you. The season for the AFLW starts soon, so we'll see you yeah. at that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, guys. All right, enjoy the week, enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for having me, team. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Katie. Uh, next, Alex. we got we got Tommy Tom. on Katie's list. Tommy, hey, guys. Tommy, got us, mate. Yeah. Hey, guys. Well, uh, Tommy, oh, I love that. <laughs> I thought your your post that you did, your uh, message that you sent through. Uh, photo. Yeah. I was trying to figure out where that photo was. I remember that photo. I actually, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, that little one, yeah. I was having my room for whole for whole year. Uh, for, for the past three years, I've been in my room. So. Speak clearly. Mm. Yeah. So for those for those who might not know Tommy, Tommy is in the cheer squad with me. Tom's one of my best friends. I consider Tom a little brother to me. And you just put him Tom, that was all. Could you just? Um, we couldn't, there was no sound on Tom then. We couldn't, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so, nice so, so, if you can turn it up, Tommy, turn it up. But yeah. Tommy's like a little brother to me, and he's in our cheer yeah. squad. Um, Tom, if you want to explain to Eddie, yeah. you know, what it means to you, can you hear us, Tom? Can you hear? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear, hear us? Yeah. Yeah. You just want to ask what, you know, I know that Eddie means a lot to you personally and, I, you know, I'm wrapped that you get the chance to do this, mate. It means a lot to me to see you talking to him. Um, yeah. What do you think? You know, I know you've got something you want to say. Yeah, um, I would like to say that um, I would like to thank you for uh, getting me back on, on here. Um, but I'm quite emotional to, at the moment, knowing that Eddie's uh, my all-time favourite player, um, is retiring after this weekend in Dane. Um, can, can, always, can you understand me? Hmm? I'm asking if we can understand you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're right. I always um, watch Eddie play every week, and I just want you to play um, like Eddie. Uh, my first footy coach nicknamed me as Little Eddie Betts. Um, Why did they call know, you Little Eddie Betts? Uh, because I played in the full line. And um, I kicked goals from the, from the um, boundaries. 
Yes. Make sure you put them in front yeah. first and then go to the boundary. <laughs> Yeah, but and the nickname just just got stuck into me for for rest my yeah. my um journey journey. So um, that's right. Yeah, and yeah, when right. and when was it, Tommy? That that shirt you're wearing that's signed by Eddie Eddie's pocket. When um, was it, and why was it that Eddie sent that to you? Um. Well, actually, um, I was um, interviewed by Seven News uh, back in 2014. Yep. And um, you know, Katie, yeah. Yeah, um, he had, he had um, Eddie and Anna into, to watch the um, interview, and um, that's how um, they sent me the top. And uh, I just, I was just so um, shocked to get it. Like, I was just yeah. so over the moon. So, so Channel Seven interviewed you at one of your local footy games. Um, so, for those who don't know, Tom, Tom is deaf. So, Tom's got a He's got an implant. Is how we can hear us. And as a local footballer, you know Tommy's had a few health battles in his life. And Tom, I love you, buddy. But your story is so important and so special that you get to play footy. Um, yeah. And not only do you play footy, you play it really well. And they call you Little Eddie Bits, is why it's so cool. But Channel Seven interviewed Tom and Katie, who was just on, saw that interview and reached out to Eddie because they mentioned how much Eddie means to him in that interview. And Eddie and Anna's reaction is to send him, you know, the merch and the shirt and get it signed. And I think it was like a week later, only a week or two later, that you took that photo there, Tom. Yeah. yeah. That's really special, mate. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful photo, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and you remember that photo because you yeah. saw that before. I saw it. I'm like, I remember him. I actually remember him coming. I saw yeah. that, that jumper. Yeah, I because he's had lots of posts, but it's actually the one post that he said, "Oh, look at this! I remember this photo." Because lots of people have been putting up posts on socials, but Eddie did actually say to me that he remembers your post the most out of all of them. So it's actually really. He right. said that in that photo to me. That photo to me, and I, and I saw it in my in my messages. That's yeah. cool. Tommy, is there a is there one moment on on the footy field of Eddie's that you remember the most? What's your favourite Eddie moment? Uh, my favourite Eddie moment is uh, when um, he kicked eight goals against Essendon. Uh, How good, How good yeah. was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. I got to say, I love the fact that the most goals that Eddie kicked against Eddie's side is Essendon, just quietly. It's one of my favourite Eddie facts. They were good goals yeah. too, guys. Hey, yeah. right. that one, you, put, you broke Slattery's ankles about five times for that last one. It was amazing. Yeah, I went yeah. to like, go that way, go this way, go back. And, you know, that was amazing. a great night. Andrew yeah. Walker took part of the century. I kicked eight goals. Oh, was, Oscar Carlton Judd got born that week. Oscar Judd got born that week. It was all around. It was a big week Happy for the club. Week. Great week for the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for, for the team, Dark, for letting me have an opportunity to speak to Eddie and all that. So thank you. Thank you, no, buddy. I'm really glad you got on. Uh, all the best to you, um, Eddie, uh, for your retirement. Um, I'll forever miss you. Um, what's in your property? And kick all those big ghost goals. No, thanks, Tom. I'm going to miss kicking goals as well. But. Uh... I got I got a next bunch of young kids coming through, so hopefully they can play for Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> Another Eddie Betts coming through. Oh, Thank you. Be Thanks, good. Tom. Tom. Well done, Tommy. Love you, buddy. Bye. See you, mate. Uh, next one we've got on is our resident uh, Pommy Dan Williams. Dan, you got us, mate. I have. Um, just sorry, firstly, we kept you waiting. To uh, young Katie and young Tom, um, it kind of fits in with what I wanted to talk to Eddie about. Um, as a young kid growing up, I was an institution. I was adopted out. I was in institutional care. And 2013, my team Rangers signed a young player called Mark Walters, who was the first black guy since the war to play for Rangers. And I remember that poignantly as a kid because it was the first time I was really exposed to racism. And I remember him talking about it and kind of as a young boy, you don't really understand racism because you play with everyone. And hearing him talk heartfelt about the sectarian violence that was brought towards him um, really touched me as I grew up. And it was something that stuck with me. And 
now, as a parent, my son's first game was 2019 when you kicked that goal against Gold Coast. It was the first time he watched it. And something happened to him. It, it drew him to football. And it got me thinking, you forget about your idols when you're a young boy. But then when you get old, you kind of remember they were the first time you ever worshipped another human being because no one really likes the parents, if we're honest. And <laughs> it made me think how close you've brought me and my son together. So every night we read this book, it's his favourite book. Um, oh, so he, and it was all he wrote to Santa for. He wanted a signed copy. And as luck would have it, because I, I'm on the Blue Abroad show all the time, he thought I knew you personally. Unfortunately, I don't. So I had to uh, <laughs> pay a bit extra on your website and get it. But it, oh, it no. made his day. And what I wanted to talk to you about, Eddie, is I, I, I think as an inspiration you are as a human being. I think people forget playing sports, one thing that's pretty exceptional. But to hear you carry so much pain with you when you play, but the way you play, you play with a smile and a joy, and we wouldn't believe Absolutely. any of this would go on the way you play. And I think that sets you above a lot of people in the world. And I think it's a great lesson to all people, that no matter what we're going on in the world, sometimes the most powerful way to get your message across is by humble and being a smile and bringing joy and fighting hate with joy. So as a father, I thank you for teaching my son a lesson that I could probably never get across to him. No, nah, oh, good. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, that's just the way I live my life. And I was brought up to treat everyone equally, treat everyone with respect, um, and just be kind to one another. And you know, treat someone the way that you would like to be treated. And and when I get on a footy field, it's like I'm a little kid. And um, and because I love it so much, I just smile and enjoy it. And uh, and and I and I just keep doing it. And I keep loving it. And um, I guess that's the best way that when I do smile, I play my best footy. And, um, you know, when I'm angry and I'm agitated, I feel like I'm not being me and I'm not playing that, that best footy. But when I'm just enjoying it, smiling, having fun, being that little kid again, like, you know, that, that little kid's in me, like kicking the footy around with my older cousins at home, um, back in the communities. And when I'm on the footy field and I'm doing that, it's it's so exciting and I just love it so much and I'm gonna miss it. I truly am gonna miss it, but this probably won't be the last time you see my smile because I'll be I'll be still smiling from your on. Damn right, brother. And I just wanted to quickly ask you. I know you came and a big part of you coming to the club was to develop the players and pass on kind of the holy grail of small forward knowledge. Um, I followed Corey Durden a lot in his junior career. We know he's a South Australian boy, and we finally got to see him this week. You've, you've taught him a few tricks, haven't you, Eddie? Do you want to just uh, share with the group? He's got a little bit of Eddie Betts about him, hasn't he? He's got that never-give-up attitude, which he was more violent as a junior. He's now got that classy finishing to him. Yeah, he's he's he's, like, he's a little he's a little beast. Like, he just loves to chase and tackle. And and, I, and I've always said to him, and I said to Maddie, oh, he's a Josh Honey. No matter, playing a small forward role, it's one of the hardest positions to play on the ground. And if you bring your pressure, you chase, you tackle – and bring the heat, um, everything else will come from it. The goals will come from it. Don't worry about your touches because as a small forward, you're not going to rack up possessions. Um, you know, you may kick one or two goals, but if your pressure's there and your intent's there, you're going to keep your spot on the side. So, um, and that's the advice that I give them to them and they've they've taken it on board and, and Corey is going to be a little gun. I guarantee you he's going to be a little gun and um, hopefully he can play some more, more footy. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. Honestly, on behalf of the entire POM household here, the, the all the boys love you, even though my wife still and my daughter and my uh, son to St Kilda, they, they're all united in, they want to be it's Eddie Betts when they grow up. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave you with a song, though I'm known for a POM song, and I wrote you a little <laughs> song for this weekend because I do football chants. So oh, okay. in honour of you, Eddie, yep. Bob's right. to the left. Banana to the right, Eddie Betts, he makes the bombers look shy. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all good. Thank you. The bombers Thanks, are yeah. shy. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Love you, Pom. Love you, Pom. <laughs> uh, next in, we've got uh, Paul Sebastiani. Paul, you got us, mate. 
Rue, I've got got you loud and clear. What a fantastic lineup this is. Oh, where's the new hoodie, mate? <laughs> You've got new merch and you're not wearing. I'm repping Cheer Squad merch. I thought you'd be certainly in your new jewelry. No, 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 no new merch. I'm not, I'm not going to promote this. Is, this is all about Eddie tonight and uh, and his family. So um, it's not not about me. Not about me tonight. So thanks thanks for doing this, Eddie and, and Anna. Really really appreciate you giving us some time tonight. No, that's not no, all good. All good. Are you in Melbourne? Uh, Right, yeah, I'm in Melbourne, in uh, in the heart of Coburg, the the home of of Italianville, Wogville, as we call it over here. <laughs> oh, that's the best place. <laughs> um, I th I think. Did this... you see the A one the A one bakery was an exposure site? Oh, no, no, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> been to. Oh, I only go to Zata. Went... I only go to Zata. The two oh, twins, the twins. The yeah, boys, we the went boys. there and then we were like, oh, it's an exposure site. We better not go in because Eddie might I want not. to play my last game. <laughs> <laughs> it was the day off. <laughs> I, think, I think for me the, the one thing that resonates with me when, when I look at yourself and, and the way you conduct yourself, I think, I think the one word that comes up is family. Um, and, you know, being of, you know, I'm, I'm born here, but, you know, being of, of an Italian background, I think family is such an important thing for us as it as it is for you i mean the the question i'd ask you i mean what what is what does family mean to you and, and what has it meant for you over your career and, and throughout your life eddie uh well for me family is everything it's because as Ab aboriginal culture and aboriginal families we grew up in, in a big big family group you know growing up um in kalgoorlie in a three-bedroom house with 18 kids running around you know my mum my mum's sisters my grandfather and grandmother's house but we all lived in that house and we grew up, no iPads, no phones, just everyone playing out the side, kids, and it was just so free and so fun. And and that's how we survived. You know, every, every one of us had a role to play in our family. And I think if you watch my my speech that I did to the boys at the end and I said, listen, um, the way that we grew up, everyone played that part. You know, once everyone played that part, you know, better outcomes came for our family. And that's how we survived and that's how we lived week to week. And, um, and, it, and it was awesome growing up and, and that's how I still live our life now. And Family is everything to me, and you know, you know, I put footy footies on the back burner when it comes to family, and uh, and they're the reasons why I'm, you know, still playing in a sense, playing AFL footy and still enjoying it because Louis was one of the ones that brought the love back. Because I kind of lost a little bit of the love for football, but Louis, mm. uh, the my first was the one that really that's the second that's the second that just walked past um, <laughs> we got the third fourth or fifth somewhere else here somewhere <laughs> such a tribe but uh yeah family's everything for me and um you know they bring the joy and family they, they don't care about footy like you get home you have a bad loss they don't care yeah yeah louis here. does louis does but the girls He'll you want give you feedback. louis will give me feedback but, but the other girls they still got smiles on their faces he got smiles on his face and they just want to play with their dad and their mum and so yeah, family means everything to us. Yeah, and, and and from like I was watching your um your address to the boys when you announced your retirement. You mentioned that you you were I think was it you were driving up to Sydney and you did you didn't want to play and mm, and Shado yeah. called you into his office and what what was like what was sort of the penny drop moment for you in maybe in your in career and life or like what was a penny drop moment for you in footy and, and maybe just in life as a father or, or as a young man. Well, one of them would be. Having having your first child as um, the, the grow up. The other one was the boat cruise, the famous boat cruise you'll all know about. Um, I got arrested uh, in the CBD, and that was probably a big eye opener for me. Just that you know, I had to put my head in, and you know, I could have lost my career then, um, dusted, and then you know, I wouldn't be sitting here um, talking to you guys. And so I had to like really come clear. And Anna was a big part of that, and she kind of you know, mate, we, we sat down together and spoke about the choices we had to make from here onwards and going forward, and. Um, I had to start to grow up and become a leader and be a role model to, you know, a lot of people. And, um, yeah, that was probably a, a moment where I had to start being serious. And, um, you know, not, it's not that I wasn't serious. I, I was serious and I was playing, but it was just that, that time there, you know, I could have lost my career. So I had to grow up. And, and now I do talks. I do talks. Um, with kids and I, and I and I take that photo because it was a photo of me and Robbo when we went to Las Vegas little on the Las Vegas trip and we were sitting down. I had kind of like this cigarette in my hand and a drink and posing for a photo, and Robbo the idiot posted it on his, on Facebook. And now that he didn't even smoke. No, don't even smoke. And so 
Uh, but I had a bit of a smoke cigarettes. I was so, so annoyed at that part. And so it's like, um, it was like, you know, every time now when you Google Eddie Betts, when you, when you Google Eddie Betts, that photo comes up and that's just not who I am as a person. And I yep. kind of, it kind of like sinking feeling in my tummy. And I, and I go to talk to kids and I say, this, you know, you could change your life around and I take this article and I show them what where I was and how I've been and what I've been known to be a bad boy, uh, you know, and this and I, and I had a paper from the Adelaide um, advertiser saying, you know, you give me the face of the Adelaide Football Club um, there at one mm-hmm. stage. And and I said, these are my two tales of the story where at one stage I was here and I said, no, nah, I'm going to change that person. I'm, I'm not who that person is and I want to be someone else and basically strove, um, strive to be better. And, um, yeah, eventually, you know, it changed my life. Mm, Just, I'll, have, I'll, I'll leave you with two quick ones. Um, I get, you know, we speak about these brilliant Indigenous footballers and they, they just seem to have this, there's a certain magic and, and aura they have about them that's just completely different to, to any other player that takes to the football field. What, what, what is it with the Indigenous, you know, players that come onto the field? What, why, why are they so different with the way they, you know, attack the football and, and their flair and their aura? It, it just seems to me that they're, they're just head and shoulders above the rest of the league when it comes to, when it comes to talent. I think um, when it, when it, the skill wise, we're, we're very talented. I think it's passed down from my father and his father. My, my, my father was, my grandfather was a very talented footballer. My dad was a very talented footballer. My mum's brothers were very talented footballers. My mum was a very sporty. And so, but in saying that, you know, yeah, we do have kind of a gift uh, with the ball, but without hard work and, you know, dedication, and commitment, you know, the skill will get you nowhere. And so we had, we had to work hard to be where we are. Uh, we can't just rely on the skill base to get you to to play AFL footy and um, and it was hard, you know, you, you had to work hard for, for uh, you know, your role in the team and I, I guess, yeah, it's weird, but to be honest, like my my family, every one of my single, my older brothers, they are so talented and they could play AFL footy, but they just weren't determined and committed to move out of that environment that they live in and, and which I, is okay I, don't, too. I don't blame them which because is okay too. which is nice and it's comfortable and, and we're happy, 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 living a happy life and yeah. You know, I wanted to play footy. They, I, if they had the determination that I, that I did, they they probably would play AFL footy. But I wanted to make it, and I was determined to make it, and and I did a lot of hard work in those junior years to to make it. So um, yeah, it's it's just raw talent, and I can't explain it. And hopefully, my kids have got it. I'll find out. <laughs> I'm sure they, they might. I'm sure they do. We've seen Louie in the hallway, hallway with you, mate. Just a quick yeah. last one, a very quick one. This is this is probably going to be the most important question of the night. Can we confirm what size shorts do you actually wear? XL. <laughs> XL. XL. That's on the record now. XL shorts, and I've always worn them. Hey. I mean, like Mark Pitt at the Ruckman wears medium. I'm like, how are you wearing Ruckman? You look like Warwick Kevin. They stuck up your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much, Eddie. And I really, really appreciate it. Um, and- Nick, we'll have to donate a pair of Eddie's um, footy shorts for you guys to raffle off. <laughs> I, I think love we'll- that idea. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll I love make that sure idea. Because there's a few You're lying elite. around. There's a few big ones lying around. Yeah, yeah. they are. You're elite. That's a good idea. <laughs> Cheers, Paulie. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us, man. No worries. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Much love. Thanks, Paul. Uh, next, we've got Joe on. Joey from Almost Blue Brothers. You got us, mate. <sighs> Thank you very much, Riley. Nick, thank you for the show. Eddie, Anna, how are you guys? This is uh, this is uh, this is an absolute privilege. Um, Eddie, look, for me, mate, um, I'm 26 years old. You know, I've been following Carlton my whole life. Um, and literally my earliest memories uh, of my teenage years and of my, you know, late childhood is uh, is of you, you know, 2005, 2006, um, just doing things that I had genuinely never seen before and never thought were even possible, mate. Um, and you did it from game, literally game one, um, and I'm sure you're going to put on an absolute clinic this week as well. Um, look, 
I, I just got to know, like my my favorite all time memory of you isn't even when you're in a in in a in a Carlton jumper. It's when you've kicked that top on your left from fifty on the boundary. I need to know what goes through your head, mate, when you decide this is what I'm going with and it's going to nail. Yeah, it's a good question. I get asked that a lot. What goes through your head and. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I just don't think. I, well, I do think, but I don't. In a sense, it's like on instinct, and you get you get one, two, maybe three or four seconds to, to make a decision if you're going to pass, if you're going to have a shot. And I, I think the first one second, I'm like, I'll look for someone, but then the next two to three seconds, I'm like, nah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I got this. Um, but yeah, like the, the decisions though on the field is like. It's weird. I feel like it's in slow motion, but it's not. Because um, like when you're in those pockets, you, you figure out what kick are you going to do. If someone's on the line, you got to kick it high or you're going to dribble it along the ground uh, to let it roll through. Uh, and you've got a split second to make those decisions. Like it could be a dribbler, it could be a left foot check side, it could be a right, it could be a snap, it could be a torpedo. And uh, yeah, and, and honestly, it feels like slow motion in, in those sense. Um, and it just uh, to be honest, I don't know how to go in, but it uh, they keep going through the sticks, which I'm happy with. But yeah, it's, it's weird. No. Like it's honestly weird the decisions that come to your head uh, that you got to make on, on the on the go, like the dribble, the check side, the snap, the top, and um, yeah, I'm so happy that they go through. <laughs> Mate, you've had 600 out of them, so they're not flukes at this point. You, you genuinely know what you're doing, obviously. Um, Anna, for you. How, how um, uh, not just as a footballer, but obviously as a person and, and the person that Eddie's become and, you know, it's been well publicised, sort of where you come from, Eddie, and 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 the person that you are today. Anna, how how proud does it make you to, to sit there next to Eddie today as his wife and and as part of his family to, to see him, you know, become the person that he is and know that he's had such an impact on the field, but I think we all know he's going to have an even bigger impact off the field. Um, after this weekend, but just what what does that how does that make you feel like in in all honesty? Um, yeah, I'd say that he's very courageous because um, I guess standing up for like racism, for example, if we're talking off field, um, it can take a lot and it can take a toll, and not many people see the toll that it can take. So I guess that seeing that um, and that he continually continuously um, shows up um, for his people and. Um, over and over again, even though it does and can take a toll. Um, so I just, am, in terms of being proud, I just think he's very courageous. And um, but also, I just think as well, like just often um, with his leadership in such a um, in the environment that he's in, it's often I believe um, very undervalued because he's just a quiet leader. Um, because his leadership style is so different to sort of like someone who's really out there and loud. Um, and that's attributed mainly, I think, to his family and just how he was raised, just looking after people. And I think that leadership there is just something as well that I've always been really proud of as well, is, um, yeah, just being that leader but not changing, you know, just not conforming to how a football club would be, just keeping your own style of leadership. And um, I think, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> Thanks, <Unreal>. my love. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to we we had to ask Anna while she's sitting there. You, you, you need to know sort of what goes on in her head every week, watching you do the things you do, mate. Um, look, I, I won't keep you for long. I know your kids are probably tired. They've uh, they've waited up all night. But, mate, just the all last right. one, um, the last one I, I, I want to ask, you know, you, you've put on the navy blue jumper so many times. Um, you've also put on the crow's jumper, but I'm not a crow supporter, so they can get stuffed tonight. Um, <laughs> what, what, does, what, does, what does the monogram mean to you? Like, you know... To be able to pull on that jumper for me, it, it was just a childhood dream. I'm I'm no athlete. I'm I'm not even close. So uh, it was it was always a pipe dream more than anything. But for you, what's it meant to pull on that jumper for for so many games across your across your career? And what does the Carlton Footy Club mean to you, mate? Yeah, well, the Carlton Football Club was basically home. It was my home away from home. You know, as a teenager, uh, not really having any education, having um, I couldn't read or write properly. Um, and you know, getting an opportunity to pull on that logo, that, that jumper for the first time really changed my life and, and set me up to be the person that I am today because if I wasn't drafted, if I didn't play for the Carlton Football Club, I would have had nothing, to be honest. And um, 
had set me up. And, uh, yeah, and like I said to the players, I said, you know, the Comfort Football Club's your home. Um, the number on the back, that means nothing to nobody. It's that logo on the front that represents everything to you and, the, and our supporters, and, and that's what you should be playing for, not your number on the back, the, the logo on the front. And, um, and that's the Carl Football Club. And to most of those boys, that is home for them at the moment. And hopefully they feel as passionate about it is that, that I do about this club and about getting success. And, you know, like I said to them, everyone needs to play their part. And once they play their part, eventually we're going to get success. And, and they will. And we need to be back playing final footy where this club deserved to be because it's a great, rich um, and one of the biggest clubs in, um, in the AFL. So, Rich history, you mean? Yeah, rich history. Um, so oh. one of our kids fell oh. over. You okay? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, um, I'll leave you with that, Eddie, just from the bottom of my heart, mate. Thank you so much for all the memories you've given me. All memories you've given blue baggers around the country and just football fans in general, you are you are the goat. I'll be telling my kids, you are the absolute <laughs> goat. You're the best I've ever seen, mate. And I don't know if anyone's going to top it. So thank you very much. Good luck in in the next part of your journey. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Thanks, Thanks Jack. It's just amazing. I I think just to. Um, say very slightly how much you mean to so many people, Eddie yeah. and Anna and your family. What what you've been able to provide us over so many years. It's um I said it before. I'll say it, it's it's a credit to you. And um, yeah. yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, have you got Mish there? Yeah. I've got Mish here. Hey Mish. Hey, Mish. I thought I'd I thought I'd bring a female on and right in this in this sausage fest. Poor Anna by herself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right, but oh, I do she love. To, she wants a jumper. Come here. Oh, okay, go get one. I'll get her a picture. Okay. There we go. Oh, now we've lost the main talent. Now we're, now we're left with the real star. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just asked today if I was going to go into AFLW coaching, and um, we had an interesting conversation, Eddie and I, about that. I've got to test my skills out with the men's first before I could um go. The girls are up here. Test the skills out with the men, then go across to the women's, up to the women's. Damn right. <laughs> Eddie's like, you're too biased to the small forwards. You cannot coach. <laughs> I'll back you in. <laughs> Thank you. Match selection, just pick 22 small forwards per week. <laughs> <It's all right>. <laughs> 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 the magnet boards has got everything all weighted down one end. I love it. Be good for ground ball. <laughs> Would never what lose do you, ground ball. I, I, what do you think? Back. What's you you're, you're, you're hearing all of our favourite memories. What are yours? Mm. Like, what's your favourite goal? Your best uh, memory? Well, one of my best memories is probably my first goal of the year against Collingwood. Around 20, East Scotland got knocked out by Dyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, I ran down, I think, Tarkin Lockyer. Hand passed the ball, I intercepted it. I think he was giving it to Simon Crestor. Yeah, yeah, that's how old I am. I played. Um, the ball in the pocket and kicked the goal. Uh, that was that was pretty special. Um, but I guess that the one of the other moments was uh, kicking goal of the year at Adelaide Oval when um, it was Sir Doug Nichols round. I was playing for Adelaide at that time. My auntie, my dad's sister, she designed the jersey that we wore, and the, and the designs were from my land and my country back home in Port Lincoln. South Australia, and uh, it was it was special because they, they they invited my auntie there, my grandmother, and my father. And um, mm -hmm. oh, we, got, we got Lewis Betts joining us. Yeah, you know, legend. Hey, Lewis. And uh, he might tell you his favorite moment, but um, yeah, that was probably one of the favorite winning goals of the year. Um, What's your favorite moment about Dad playing footy? What's your favorite footy moment of Dad's, Louis? Moment goal. Favorite goal. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's your favourite moment? Favourite moment? When he scored that goal against Port Adelaide. Which one? Like the one where they ran to the book and he took the snap. That was when I kicked, uh, that was my 250th game, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Turn oh, to no. the Port Adelaide to the crowd and show it off to them. Because uh, the commentators are like, Said to said to Mark Shooter, I think, because we because Lewis comes on the ground. We had a routine at Adelaide Oval before every game. He would come out on the ground, kick the ball with me, 
um, yeah. kick some goals uh, and do that. And we had an interview with Michael Trudeau. And Michael Trudeau said to Louis before the game, how many goals is Dad going to kick today? And what did you say? What did I say? I he said five. five. He said five goals. And I kicked five goals. And that one that he was talking about was the fifth goal that I kicked. And Michael Trudeau goes, what a goal. Well, his son said he was going to kick five. And who would know him better than his son, Louis? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, you should have said ten, Louis. <laughs> yeah, should have said ten. <laughs> Louis, um, who's a better shot for goal, or Dad? Who's a better shot for goal? Uh, well, I didn't even know why you're thinking about that. Of course, man. <laughs> We've got video proof of you guys kicking the footy in the hallway, kicking it into the doorway, and you scored more goals than your dad. I've seen that video from the crowd. We've all seen it. We've all, We've seen, all seen that. Right? What was on the line? What was on the line that night? What was the dinner? Oh, chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's why he wanted to win so bad. There were chicken nuggets on the line. Um, no, nah, but that would be one of my favourite moments. Um, it's walking out at, on milestone game. I guess my 300th over there against Gold Coast. I get, it was a wonderful week. I uh, get to spend time with family. My mum and dad flew over. I had, um, dad was in South Australia. Mum was in Western Australia. And they're really in a room together, so it was unique to have those two in a room together because they split up 20 years ago, 30, 25 years ago. And um, yeah, it was just a great time. We won the game, I ended up kicking goal of the year in that game as well. Um, and Louis spending time with the kid, Louis was on the oval walking off with us, and it was just a real special, special moment that way. So it would be a bit different this week, 350th, they won't be able to come out there, but we had. Um, we had our 300th was, was a good moment, wasn't it? We'll just cry at home together, won't we? I will. <laughs> Me too. Me three. Yeah, me four. <laughs> <laughs> and then and there's 80,000 other, 80, other members and everyone else, I'm sure, will be a part of it. <laughs> hey, Eddie, my nephew's at home and it's way past his bedtime, but he's refusing to go to bed until this ends and he doesn't even go for Carlton, but that's the effect you have. Yeah. On young kids these days, yep, or forever really. These books are for him, and he's not going to bed until this ends. So that's well, you know, six. Six-year-old Bulldogs fan is up up past his bedtime watching you. Well, he's got to go to if bed. You know, you could say Aiden, go to bed. You're welcome to. You've got to go to bed. You too. Bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks for all the memories, mate. That will be cherished forever. Yep. Oh, I got one more, one more week to, to give some memories and show some. Yeah, I'm right. Some... No, we'll we, see how we, we go. Got, we got another guest here, Riles. We we do we've got a couple more. We got Rafi. Um, he's from New South Wales. Rafi, you there, mate? Hi guys, how's it going? So glad to see Hi. you here, brother. Oh, but it's it's, it's great to be here. I'm um, I'm glad I was able to um actually make make it on i saw the instagram post like oh Eddie Best is gonna be on the blue or broad show and i was just like <gasps> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so, um uh, i had to i had to, um i had to so um thank you for having me on thank you very much i'm so wrapped to have you here mate how's how's life in how's life in lockdown um not great <laughs> um case case numbers keep going up 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 um mm. Um, obviously there's no travel anywhere. I always sort of envisaged that I would make Eddie's last game um, and see it in the flesh. Obviously not even like, not even Victorians can do that now. Um, but um, I guess just a sign of the time that we're living in, but yeah. um, you know, there's always TV. I, I get to watch yeah. it on TV and I always get to, I get to say hello to Eddie and, and, and the gang uh, tonight. So uh, hello to you guys, and um, yeah, thank you for all the wonderful memories uh, that you'll uh, that you've left me with. Oh, I hope uh, you're Raffy. okay. Yeah, thank you. Raffy's one of our New South Wales uh, supporters, so we know that things aren't too great up in New South Wales at the moment, Raffy. But um, you know, is there any specific moment you've you, you've got of Eddie's? I know that. Footy hasn't been a uh, a lifelong thing for you, but your your uh, footy journey is really impactful for me. But um, what are some Eddie moments that stand out for you? Um, uh, I've got uh, two, two main ones. Um, I started supporting Carlton and, in fact, watching AFL in 2015, so I was quite late to it. 
Um, so by that time you were playing for Adelaide. Um, so one of my favorite moments was realizing when you were going to come back. Um, cause you, 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 you read all these rumors and stuff on Facebook. There's just so much crap on social media, but when it was official that yeah. you were coming back and uh, I'd see you as a blue again, that made me smile so widely. And also number two was your goal against the Swans at the, uh, the SCG, um, uh, this year, because that was actually the first time I'd actually seen you play live as a blue so um it was really special uh for me for for, for that reason Dan, another thing on that one too i didn't win goal of the week for that that one it that was, was right you should have done rob absolutely rob. criminal one-handed pickup one-handed pickup swing around yeah. on the rifle on the boundary it was difficult degrees you know yeah. it could have you your heart out that was awesome Right, apparently yeah, that, 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 that was. Yeah. Do you know who did get it that year? That was actually a ripper goal. Who got it that yeah, week? Sorry, it, it should be. I think all the Adelaide Crows fans might have voted for Taylor. Yeah, that was bullshit. Sorry about my language. That's how you really feel, it. Oh, it was way better than that. Really? It was. I'm just being real. Taylor just nah, snap. Keep it real, man. Keep it real. Keep it real, buddy. Hey, the, the AFL and Clubland, they can't tell you off. What are they going to do? <laughs> Give it like, a sack. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it's like, like your last game on the weekend. It's like, what, you're going to get suspended? I don't think so. Nah. Oh, Thank you, Dan. Sorry, so much. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, no problem. No problem. Um, I just wanted to say before I go... Um, I understand that you deal with a lot of uh, uh, racism and a lot of bullshit comes your way, and I can't imagine how sad it must make you feel. But what I want is for you to just realise I watch your highlights real when I feel sad, Eddie, and that makes me smile. Watching you play football turns me from sad to happy. And mm. it's um, I, I, I can't imagine what it's like for you, but in, in those moments when you're feeling down and you're feeling blue, I, uh, no pun intended, just please remember how much you're loved and just how happy you've made me as a person because I'm just one person. There are thousands of people like me. So whenever you're feeling sad, please just remember the joy that you bring people and that you've brought to me personally. Um, and hopefully hopefully that, that helps because uh, I love you so much, Eddie, and I'll be bawling my ass out at, at, at your last game. I'm sad, Dave. We were taking bets. No yeah, who, excuse the pun. We were taking bets on who would be the one, and it was Rafi that got me. <laughs> oh, well, on your ass. All right, no, no worries. Thank you so much. All the best, and kick a bag for me, Eddie. Okay. You'll do. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Um, bye, mate. Well done, bye. 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 We've got a uh, great man, uh, Rocco, I'm now into the chat. Rocco. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rocco. Hi. I'm old school, so just to get this camera to work, I've just had a nervous breakdown here, right, because Eddie's <laughs> on and I'm trying to get on and I can't get the camera to work. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's great to talk to you, mate. I'm old school. I'm like 100 years old, man. I remember when you first came down to Melbourne. Trust me, man, I'm that old, mate. I was there <laughs> in the 1945 bloodbath. That's how old I am. Um, <laughs> I seen you come down when you first came down. Uh, the little man, you come down, you were drafted as a rookie. Am I correct? Yeah, on the preseason. No, I wasn't a rookie. I missed out on the national draft. But I got picked up on the preseason draft at number three, which put me on the senior list, which was which I was pretty stoked about. Real quick. And then straight away I said, This is it, mate. We got look at this bloke. We got him like look at this bloke, man. This bloke can really do some damage at the front, you know. And you did, man. And then there was like Favola. Uh when you waits for Vola were all up there. And then there was Gartler and there was also Yaron. Man, when when that whole system was working, we were on we were on top of the world, mate. Yeah, because before it. that, in the 80s and that, I used to walk around with my chest held out because I followed the blues, mate. And we were there was only one team. And then 
we went a little bit down, but then you come along and we we got back up there, mate. We got back up there for a little while, yeah. Yeah, it was good, especially when Brett Rad took over coaching. And um, like you said, that forward line was a bloody unique forward line, you know. Yeah. yeah weighty, weighty when he was wasn't injured when he was fresh. He he was an absolute. Wasn't suspended. Yeah, he was. Yeah, no, not all suspended. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's really it when he was good. playing. Yeah, that's it, man. If it wasn't one, it was the other. Yous are all yeah. doing damage, you. And then when Mitchy Robinson was there too, everyone forgets when Mitchy Robinson was there, mate. Uh, the day that he left, he should never. They should never have got rid of him. That's for another day. But um, the day he left, we just lost that little bit of hardness, a little bit of yeah. hardness. I'm sure you all walked out a little bit tougher when he walked out. Yeah, he, he, he showed a lot of passion. Which he done. He plays with passion on his sleeve, and he goes in hard. And you know, we did miss that at times um, in the last two years of you know that hardness of someone like Mitch Robertson to come in and spark us up and get going. And Jack Martin did a few of that this year and the year before where he's hard at it for a little skinny bloke and he hits hard and he tackles hard and, and he, he sparked us a few times. But, you know, Mitch was one of those ones where he could spark us and get us going. Um, the crazy no, definitely. Thing. Now, if we're going to remember one moment now, we're going to go back to that 13th final, yeah, against Richmond. Yep. And the moment I remember when I jumped up and I knew that this was it, and I thought we already had it before that, we went, when little Jeffy j jumped over the player and he just ran towards goal. Who was shepherding him? I shepherded yes, him. Yeah. You, you gave him the shepherd. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You gave him the shepherd. But Gala took all the glory as he ran up and he gave the fist up, mate. Eh? He was quick, yeah, wasn't he? Was he? Uh, you know, Richmond finished ninth for the last seven years and then. They finally, and we finish ninth, we and finish ninth. got out of the finals. So they, they finished ninth for seven years, and they got beaten by a team in their first final. They finished ninth, realistically. How good was that? Fantastic. How good was that? I was that giving was shit to Richmond. Yeah, I was giving yep. shit to Richmond supporters for years. I mean, it's all turned in recent times, oh, but was, yeah, I hate them now. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I wish I could have played against them this year, you know, round one. Um, but I know. I but, yeah, um, I haven't played with them for, for two years, to be honest. To be yeah, honest. Yeah, missed last year as well, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. It's on that they summer, should give me another really contract fun. because I reckon we've got them next year. We've got them round one. It's ours, mate. We're taking it home, mate. I'll be there watching. I'll be there watching with You'll you guys. You'll be there watching 100%, man. Yes, You'll be there watching, man. We'll put you on the floggers in the cheer squad, front row. Now, front one row. last thing. You, you, you're you, a blue, aren't you? Forget about this Adelaide. You had a little bit of a holiday over there. You went over there and, yeah, all right. You gave them a little bit, yeah, happy. You're all happy. Now, stay in your little place over there. You're a blue. You've always been a blue. Let, let's admit it. Come on. I'm a life member. I'm not a life member of the Adelaide Football Club. I'm a life member of the Carl Football Club. No, you've no, got to say know. that, but... It's here, isn't it? It's, it's here. Come on, we're in blue. Let's the go. Bag is, you see, you see the front. <laughs> I love it. You're on the fiftieth t-shirt. It's always that tap in the heart. <laughs> That's it. It's all in the heart, man. That's what it's all about, man. Play with the heart, and man, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there, man. Love you, Eddie. Love you heaps, yeah, well, mate. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for. Hey, and if you ever want to come on to the jumper punch, you're more than welcome, mate. We'll have a ball. What's your favourite drink? What's your favourite meal? We'll get it on there for you. And we'll have a bit of a chat. <laughs> no, all good, all good. Thank you. No worries, we'll guys. Thanks, mate. Thanks for getting me on. Thanks, Roger. Cheers, Roger. Well, um, well that, that about wraps it up for the evening. Um, We're mindful of your time, mate. Um, yeah. All good. Look, I don't know where to start, but yeah. we've – thank you so much, by the way. Everybody who's been in the comments – we may not have shared all the comments up here, but we have been reading them, and Eddie can see them as well. Um, so, you know, everybody who has been part of this in the comments, we have seen it, and we oh. want to thank everybody who's tuned in. But oh, we um, just... <laughs> we have the comments. Sorry, we didn't see that. <laughs> no, no, we've got the comments. But, um, you know, for, for everybody who has taken part and everybody who's joined us, um, thank you all so much. But... Most of all, Eddie and Anna, and we've had Eddie Jr. and we've had 
everyone, Louis's been on, and um, thank you guys, not only for you know your incredibly generous time tonight. Um, it, as I said before, it's testament to you guys as a family that you would offer your time to us. We didn't even have to ask, and that's for me how I feel so blessed in life to to have people like you guys to call friends who would offer this to me and to us. And um, you know that's really really powerful. And I I hope that you know some of the people coming on sharing stories about the impact you have had on their lives um, is just a small token of thanks because there's countless stories like them. Um, people in the comments, we've seen thousands of comments here tonight um, from people similar to us who just adore you. And not only as a footballer, but as a man and as a family man, um, what you stand up for and who you stand up for matters. Um, and that goes above and beyond footy. And um, so, yeah, bro, look, thank you so, so much. And you've mentioned it a few times. We haven't seen it all yet. We've got one more game this weekend, and I personally can't wait to see what you've got up your sleeve for us, mate, because I know that it's going to be something special. Yeah, thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for having me. And it was really, uh, to be honest, it was you guys that really, you know, made my day on the footy field a lot, a lot more enjoyment, a lot more enjoyable with you guys chanting that my name and getting louder every time I went near the ball. So I want to thank every single one of you. Um, you know, Carlton's always going to be in our heart. Obviously, yep. you know, we're really blue here. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm really happy that I'm, I am finishing up. I felt like I could have went, went again, but I'm really looking forward to the next chapter. But now it's time for me and Louis to come enjoy the game in the seats and, and watch and, and, and not get frustrated and just support the, support the bangers. Get frustrated. We get frustrated too, but it's part of it, yeah. Every, but every enjoy a, a nice... I wouldn't say beer, but yeah, I would say beer. Yeah. This guy's a dry zone. We can we can maybe sit in the aisle after quarter time or something, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. But thank you all so much, and um, I really appreciate it. And thanks for all the love and and support that you've shown me, especially in this week, the last week. You know, it is a, a sad wing. I'm not going to finish up, but thank you guys. I I couldn't play the brand of footy I could without you guys. So thank you so much. You're a star, brother. Thank you so much. Riles, anything else? Last words? Um, I, I think that's almost the perfect note. Just uh, yeah. you, you've been magnificent, Eddie, for for football, not just Carl, not just Adelaide, but for football yep. and what, what you've gone on. It's a stay, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done over the last 17 years and many more. Nah, thanks, thank you. thanks, mate. We love you, brother. All the best you in your right. next chapter. We'll all be following you no matter what you're doing. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you so Cheers much. Ed. Cheers, guys.